All right, everybody, today we're taking a look back at one of the all-time classic haunted house movies ever made. Truly great, truly spectacular, and I truly think you'll like it. Let's do it. All right, today we're taking a look back at 1980s The Changeling. Not Changeling with Angelina Jolie, but The Changeling with George C. Scott. One of the best Ooh, who goes there movies you will ever see. But before we go any further, as always, to the trailer. Within this old house live two residents. One of them is John Russell, composer, professor. The other has been dead for over 70 years. <laughs> Okay, this incredible motion picture was directed by Peter Medak. Now, he's done some other really cool stuff. He did The Ruling Class. He did Species 2, uh, Zorro the Gay Blade. But he mostly did TV stuff. You know, South Beach, Breaking Bad, China Beach, Magnum P.I., Heart to Heart, uh, Remington Steel, things like that. So, he had a good directing career. A lot, a lot, a lot of TV work. A few motion picture titles you'll know. It doesn't matter. He did this, and God damn it, that's all that matters here. Okay, playing John Russell is George C. Scott. And if you don't know who George C. Scott is, you better be under friggin' 30 years old, or you better have been living under a rock. I mean, why would you even be here if you don't know who George C. Scott is? I mean, come on, man. The guy is a legend. We are talking, of course... Patton. We are talking about stuff like The Hustler and Dr. Strangelove and uh, Hardcore and Hindenburg and Day of the Dolphin, uh, The Flim Flam Man, uh, Exorcist 3. I mean, he was in a bunch of cool stuff. Great, great actor. And I, I got to do Hardcore one time because that was really, really a good, dirty, friggin' grindy grindhouse type of a flick that deserves to be looked back upon and is often criminally forgotten, by the way. But George C. Scott, legendary. Even if he only made Patton, it was... Gee, whatever. Let's keep going. Okay, playing Claire Norman was Trish Vandeveer. Now, she was George C. Scott's, I think, fifth wife? Or fifth marriage, anyway. I think he had four wives before, but three wives and four marriages. Who the hell knows? But she was his last wife and was with him all the way to the end. They were married for a really, really long time. And being that, they did several movies together. Anyway, obviously they were together in this, but she was in other stuff. She was in stuff like uh, The Last Run and Messenger of Death and Day of the Dolphin, you know, with Mr. Scott. Uh, One is the Loneliest Number, uh, Where's Papa? She was on TV and stuff like uh, One Life to Live and The Fall Guy and The Love Boat and Highway to Heaven and all that kind of crap. But she was also in another 
great, great, great schlocky type of flick that we will be covering here sooner or later at some point, and that is The Hearse, which is a criminally forgotten but completely awesome flick that you know we will cover at some point or another. Okay, playing Captain DeWitt with John Golikos. Now, come on. If you're of my age and you're around in the 70s, 80s, you've seen him pop up a million times. He always played the heavy, and he always played the heavy well. In a ton of stuff. I mean, a ton of stuff. He was in stuff like uh, Then Came Bronson, and Mission Impossible, Night Gallery, The Young Rebels, and uh, Mannix, and Hawaii Five-0, and uh, Wonder Woman, and uh, General Hospital, and uh, he popped up on Star Trek once or twice, and he will always be, always be, the original Baltar on the original Battlestar Galactica. Phenomenal. Great show. And I have to say, shit, I even like the reboot even more. That thing was amazing. So check out that TV show if you ever get a shot. Okay, playing Senator Carmichael was Melvin Douglas. Long, 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 long career. Was zero million years old by the time he was in this. So his career was mostly well before this. But he was in a lot of things you should know. He was in HUD. He was in Being There, and uh, The Candidate, uh, The Americanization of Emily, and The, the Sea of Grass, and uh, Two-Faced Woman, and Captain Courageous, Fast Company, The Vampire Bat, and he was in another great movie of The Haunted Kind, and that was Ghost Story, which was a really, really, really good forgotten gem that, well, maybe not so forgotten, but it was really, really good, and it was really, really well done, and maybe we'll cover it at some point, maybe we won't, who the hell knows, but go check that one out, too. Okay, John Russell, he's a composer from New York City, he's on vacation upstate New York, where I live. And his wife and his daughter are killed in a tragic, tragic accident. They're hit by a dump truck while on the side of the road. He's left, he's broken, he's battered, he's scarred. He's not physically, emotionally. He leaves his apartment in New York City, goes out to Seattle, and uh, he's teaching there at the behest of some friends, and they find him this big Victorian mansion, well, a real estate lady does, and he's living in this mansion, trying to work again, trying to get back into his life again, and trying to find some purpose again. While he's in this mansion, weird things start happening. Pounding sounds, water faucets turning on and off by themselves, weird things. Through some investigation, he finds out that the spirit inhabiting this house is of a young child. But that's all I want to say because I don't want to tell you everything about this child. I don't want to tell you whether this child met a nefarious end. I don't want to tell you how he met a nefarious end or who did this to him or exactly what is going on. But that will be explained within the motion picture with great effectiveness. And well, I'm going to save all that for the summary. But that's all you need to know. Classic haunted house movie. Man alone in a house with a ghost and a ghost that is trying to explain to him why he is there. It's kind of a detective movie too, you know what I'm saying? But that's enough, that's enough. I don't want to give you too much. That's enough to go on. That's all you need. Watch it. Let me get to the summary because then I can tell you why I love this movie. Yeah. Okay, everybody. I'm going to tell you why I love this flick. One, it is so well done. It is so well directed. It is so well acted. It's so well written. Everything in it just bangs it out the park on every level. Everything that you can want, it is. The motion picture is slow moving. It's deliberate. It's loaded with atmosphere. It never breaks from what it is. There's never a joke or there are a moment of levity. There's shit, basically no moments of joy in this whole motion picture. It is literally eerie and odd and the camera angles that the director uses in this motion picture are also very odd you feel like sometimes george c scott is being watched from either a child's point of view from a from above being looked down or the angles are usually shooting up at an angle so it's like it's just filmed in a very weird way for a lot of it not all of it but for a lot of it and it gives you an unsettled feeling the motion picture works on scares that are very, very simple. A piano 
key moving or a door opening or a banging sound or whatever. And that's what is the best part of this motion picture. It's kind of like, you know, like the original Haunting before they made that 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 shit one with Catherine Zeta-Jones and everything where it was a CGI horror show and you couldn't stand watching it. It's always more frightening what you don't see and what your mind fills in than to what they wind up blasting you in the face with. And that's what this motion picture is. The, the scenes where he starts to see the visions of Joseph drowning in a tub. Ah, oh, shit. Did I just give you some of the story? Ah, fuck it. Of Joseph drowning in the tub. You start to see the horror and, the, and what he's feeling. And you, can, and you can really see he's intrigued to try to help this child and find out what is going on and what happens to him and what took place. It's so well done. It's so well crafted that you can't help but get caught up in this motion picture. And another top of the hat should be given to uh, Ken Wanberg because he he's done other music and movies like Blame It on Rio and the uh, Philadelphia Experiment, a couple other things. And his score is really really effective in this. It creeps you out. It's just perfect for what this motion picture is. It just fits. Anyway. Go watch this motion picture. I'm telling you, all the stuff that you see on Goofy TV, ghost shows that you never really get to experience on ghost shows, is in this motion pictures. Whether it's, you know, electronic voice phenomenon picked up on things. It's everything you could want in a ghost story because it remains true to what it is. This is not a feel-good movie. This is not a, a laughy, laughy movie. It never breaks into something other than what it is. It's going to leave you cold. It's going to leave you shocked. It's going to leave you disturbed. It's going to leave you uneasy. And that's the way it's trying to make you all the way through the motion picture. This is not a motion picture that's going to just shower you with a happy ending and shower you with joy through it. It's not. It's that kind of motion picture. And damn it, that kind of motion picture works. It's not meant to be popcorn for everybody. It's meant to make you feel scared, uneasy, and impressed with the skill of the cast and the director. And damn it, you will be. All right, folks, I'll be talking to you again soon. Thanks for stopping in as always. You know, it means a lot that you guys check this channel out and I love the comments. So everybody, be good, take care of each other, Look out for one another as always, and most importantly, don't take no shit from nobody. Bless you all. Peace.